Morning again, uh, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce in today's webinar. Um, today's webinar is about high impact online, how to look and sound professional. I'm Narinda Multani, Account Manager here at the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce. I work with businesses in the area, in the Thames Valley, and also I work very closely with my member Steve Katchin of Performance Count, who will be delivering today's webinar. So today's webinar is being recorded, so you can listen to it again and you can share the link um, amongst your network, um, and that's available through the Chamber Webinar Library. So you can access that um, from uh, probably tomorrow morning. So, yeah. If you do have any questions for Steve, please post them in the chat box and Steve will answer those um, as we go along. And we'll also share his contact details towards the end. So you can always um, connect with him and uh, call him or send him an email with any questions. Okay, so I'm going to now pass you over to Steve and yep here we go thank you narinda and welcome everybody welcome to the um, webinar on how to look professional online um, i call it high impact online because i actually i often used would deliver also face to face on how you make an impact when you're speaking one to one or when you're speaking one to many and there's an expression that you never get a second chance to make a first impression equally every impression makes counts as well after that or the way I like to put it is that every interaction is a moment of truth and people judge on those moments of truth now whether that that moment of truth is to a customer to a prospect to your manager to your peers um, to stakeholders it's a moment of truth and how you come across if you don't uh, don't look sound and act professionally can have a big influence on what happens now is um i'm not sure quite the numbers on the call at the moment but i'd be interested to know just as a matter of interest if you can put in the chat what is your type what type of job are you are you self-employed business owner are you an employee a manager um if you can just put an indication on the chat box what you are i'll know roughly who i'm addressing it's gives me a feel for how to put this across because there are different elements um, and for some people some may be speakers or trainers and there's a slightly different twist as well so i can see employees business owner marketing employee employer trainer trainers business owners that gives me a bit of a feel because i wasn't sure if we'd have um trainers chairman of a, of a tb yes hello peter good to see you okay so i'm going to give you an outline of what we're going to cover and why i consider it to be important now, I still recall the very first time, for instance, I did a talk and I was only in my early 20s and I was best man at a friend's wedding and I made a complete mess of it. And I learned from that that whatever happens, you have to be prepared. And, and I wasn't prepared, but also people look at you. They're looking at you to be professional and to set the pace and set the tone. It doesn't matter whether you're the speaker, whether you're a delegate on a call. Um, whether it's a meeting, a group meeting, you might have managers there, you might have customers there, but people are looking at you and how you look and how you act. So these are the outline of what I'm going to go through. Just let me click on here. And I'm just waiting for the response on the screen. Here we go. It's a little bit of a delay between my hitting it. So these are the areas I'm going to talk about today. Um, and I did think about, should I put the planning and preparation in? And I decided, yes, it's just like doing a talk, just like doing a training, just like going to a meeting one-to-one. -one. We have to be prepared and think about what we want to do. What, are our, what do we expect? But in essence, I'm going to talk ultimately about three points. When you're online, the essential things are to be seen clearly to be heard clearly and then communicate clearly or some it may be you could say to act professionally so these are the areas i'm going to be focusing on today this webinar is not going to be touching on the technicalities of zoom or other platforms 
Zoom is just one. And I do do that, I do cover that, as do many other people. But this one is purely about how you can look professional online and why it's important. As to why it's important, let me put it another way. The, I think the very idea of some people think that we're going to return to normal so soon is most unlikely. A mentor of mine, because um, although I do speech coaching and I coach people on speaking skills and on communicating, I also have a speech coach. I walk my talk. But he, he told me the other day that um, his neighbour is a, a high-flying hedge fund manager. And he told him that even when things get back to normal-ish, he will never go back to the office more than once a week. He has found online working far more efficient. And almost all companies are now cottoning on that they're saving a lot of money. Online working is far more cost effective. Productivity is another matter, but on the cost effectiveness, it comes in. So we're looking at a long, a long road, a long haul of working online. The other thing is, it's almost certainly to be a lot of streamlining of businesses as they go back. Rolls-Royce have announced something like 9,000 job cuts. Um, banks have announced job cuts. The hospitality industry are massively undercutting. They're, they're really suffering. So everything you've got that give you an edge to stand out from someone else is, is a tool in your pocket and is worth having. That's why I, I want to do this webinar. Uh, just a, a bit of a backdrop. I've run it a couple of times for a small club I go to, um, just to give a sample, just 10 or 15 minutes worth on two different meetings. Um, because I found that many people, not only there, but in network meetings, in club meetings and various things, look, do not look the part and do not encourage me to think, yeah, I want to I listen to that person. I really think they're good or I want to work with them. And even after giving a couple of these sort of mini sessions to people, there well, were mini sessions, I found in subsequent meetings, they weren't always taking it on board. And that can reflect in their business. So before I move on, I'm just gonna ask you if you can put in the chat for the moment, looking at those points in the outline, which do you consider to be most important? So while you're thinking about that, what do you think is more important, the planning and preparation, being seen, being heard, or the commu communicate effectively and, and be relevant. So it'd be useful to see what we all, what we all think about that. But uh, I've been on working with communication skills for many years now. I used to work at IBM. I left IBM, oh, back in 2009. And while, even while I was there, I was doing things for myself. Uh, and what have we got? So we got here being seen, command the camera, all of them, planning and preparation, being heard. Quite a nice range. And I, and I think so. And yes, um, from Peter, yeah, communicate effectively, but it's difficult if you're not being heard. So let me just talk briefly about why I think this is so critical. And actually, I'm going to do that here now when this screen clicks. There is a lengthy delay in my moving it and it going on. That's better. Right, here we got to do it that way. Well, I've given one of the reasons why. Um, what you know, the reason, it, it's gonna be the difference perhaps between keeping a job or losing it, being promoted or being passed over, winning a customer or losing them. But also we're going to look at other techniques. I'm going to give you some preparation tips. One of them is, do we use Wi-Fi or do we hardwire? I would always suggest when this comes up. And for some reason it is Sorry, not clicking. Yeah. A little bit of a delay there, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, that took a very long delay. I'll put them all up because there is a, a hell of a delay. Um, so I say hardwire the Ethernet if possible. Wi-Fi is notoriously unreliable. And especially if you've got other people in the house using things, um, it may well be that you ask that if you've got an important meeting, then you ask people to actually not use or not stream, on, not download lots of things, not watch Netflix or anything else like that. Steve, quick question. Certainly. 
Um, is Ethernet faster than Wi-Fi? No, it's not necessarily. It could be. Wi-Fi is a bit is less reliable. Ethernet is going directly into the router. The router then puts it out on Wi-Fi in your house. So there will be some possible degradation. I find it's also that the Wi-Fi tends to have a habit of maybe it can, if you do a Wi-Fi test and run it again a moment later, it can vary. Mm. Giving okay. if you put the hard wire, it just gives you that certain bit of stability and certain bit of certainty that you're more reliable. Now, the Ethernet might still go down, but the broadband might go down, but at least you're cutting down your challenges. And that's the thing. It's about trying to reduce the challenges. We already mentioned that I've, um, I've got my mobile here. If the internet goes down, I'll go on to 4G. Um, I've got my other laptop side by side. I couldn't log in on that as it happened because we only had one coming in here, but I could quickly switch to that if I have to. So it's having contingencies, testing the technology, which we did, Marinda, before we, um, before we started. We did, yes. Now, the other thing is about observing online etiquette. Clearly, this is more relevant if you're in a meeting as opposed to a webinar. But in a meeting, it's about observing who speaks, who doesn't. And typically the host, if they've done it right, they would simply have everyone muted and only allow people to unmute on their control, maybe. If it's a large meeting, if you've got 20 to 50 people in a room, it's best. If you've got three or four, five or six, it's slightly different. So you're thinking about etiquette, etiquettes, I'll say the word properly. Obviously, if you have notes, you could send them in advance. Um, you may not need notes. It's, it's just a question of being as prepared as you can. Or some people have um, handouts that can be downloaded and they give that after the meeting, maybe. But as I've mentioned earlier, it's contingency. You must have a backup plan of some sort. Uh, I know some people if speakers it will often sometimes do the whole work so they'll have things in the cloud they'll have two machines they'll have um they might even send a recording of a speech in advance so if everything goes down that can be played that's hence uh, the same with training uh, so i noticed we've got trainers we've got marketing employees it's whatever you can do to make sure that meeting goes to plan and goes ahead think about all the things just like if you're live in the training room or if you're live in the meeting room, what are you doing? And you've got slides to use. Well, what happens if there's no technology there? There's no projector. Holding one laptop on the desk for everyone to gather around doesn't work. So what's your backup plan? Always think about the backup plan. So let's, um, I'm gonna move on. I'm not sure how this will, how long it'll take to click. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to send a poll on, we're going to send out a poll now on what you think are the priorities of being seen. So Narinda, could you send that poll, please? Yeah, and that's I, been launched. And I'm going to give you just, a, a, you know, maybe sort of 30 to 50 seconds or so to decide which you consider is the most important on the visual effects. And I know you might consider more than one, but I'm thinking, what do you consider the most? It's easier just to get that one feel. Um, and it's, it's an interesting thing. I remember somebody telling me once that they used to love listening to the radio, lo love the radio, because they could see the people better on the radio. That's an interesting observation. You can see better. And why is that? Well, that's simply because when we're on the radio and radio presenters get used to giving descriptive language. So we'll come to the language part later. Can we now show the poll, please, Marinda? Okay, the results have been shared. So it's quite a mix, good lighting, high quality webcam, being well dressed, tidy background, yeah. I'm glad to see no one's put a virtual background. I have a thing about virtual backgrounds, but I'll talk, tell you more about that after. And, because they're all important, but good lighting. I would personally agree, above all, Lighting is the most important aspect, I find. Um, a good webcam will help with lighting. A tidy background, yes, if it's distracting, then it puts people, it can put others off. And obviously, we do want to be authentic, and we'll talk more about that as well after. Okay, let's close that. 
So I'm going to be showing some images of how, what it looks like when you're looking at camera, when you're not looking at camera um, and other things like that. And I'm just going to demonstrate from things I took, snapshots I took in my own office. Um, let me click that. Will that come through? It is a very long delay between clicking and something happening. Here we go. So the first thing is where you look. And I've put great big arrows by the camera because it's easy and we're all human. And if we see people on the screen, we tend to want to look at the people and we think we're looking at them. Now, the interesting thing is, excuse me, if you're in a live situation, you can engage eye contact and you engage eye contact with different people, you know, the whole room, but a bit at a time. On camera, you can you gain eye contact with everybody at the same time, but the trick is not to think of everybody. You're thinking of one person. You're looking at the camera and you're speaking to just one person. You make it an individual you talk to, and then it's personal. And the fact that there happen to be some 20 or 30 one persons or individuals on this call. So I'm speaking to each one of you individually. And that comes from eye contact, looking at the screen. Now I'll come to it later about sometimes we need, not looking at the screen, looking at the camera, sorry. But sometimes we do need to look at the screen and I'll cover that a bit later. When we're looking at reactions of people, we need to know what's going on. That's interesting you've touched on that because that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, that I believe most of us look at our screens as opposed to, uh, to yeah. the lens of the camera. So, um, yeah, so I'd like to learn a little bit more about that later. Yeah, because yeah, it, is, it is critical. I mean, we do, if we're speaking, um, we're primarily looking at the screen. But even so, now and again, we, want, we need to know what your reactions are. If you're in a sales meeting, you definitely need to look at you know, the reaction. But you've got to balance it with looking at the person through the eye, at, at, through to their eyes or looking at them through the camera, but also then coming down to the screen. And it takes a lot of practice. But um, I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like when we don't look at people through the camera and what we and when we do, or I'm going to do it the other way around, actually. And so let me try clicking on that, see if it comes up quickly or not. So here we go. Here's an example. This is um, and this also demonstrates your backgrounds. The background, my general background is OK. You know, those are shelves in my, in my uh, notes, in my books, in my DVDs. Um, but these brackets don't look that tidy. So I have, I often, if I'm doing a call, I'll put a screen up. And yet simply, uh, my purple is my brand. So I put the purple um, backing behind me. It doesn't need anything fancy. If you've got a, a nice clean white sheet, that's a perfect background too. But we're going to come to that after. But here you notice... I'm looking at you. I'm looking to the camera. And just see the difference it makes. Do you feel in that picture that um, you're being spoken to directly? Or you're being looked at directly? Let's move on to the next one. Okay, Steve, we do have a question here from Corny yeah. Calloway. Um, has anyone ever done a video with their garden um, as the backdrop? Well, I'll ask other people, have they? Yeah, that's from the other people. Um, so, yep, question for all. If you could just now, the only thing I'll say on that is, and we're going to come to lighting in a short while, is just like having a photograph, where is the sun supposed to be? Mm. When you have a photograph, the, fun, the sun should be facing you. So, yes, if you're, if you're in the garden and the sun is in front of you, it's not so bad. If the, gut, the sun is behind you, then you people can't see you. And of course, in the garden, unless you're in a very quiet area, there are distractions. But sometimes it's good. It could be an authentic setting. Sound can be a problem, especially if there's a, a bit of a breeze. Um, but it, it, yeah, interesting point. I prefer not to, but sometimes if it's an informal meeting, it might be natural. 
Yeah, Peter Smith says um, that I, I have um, that as a backdrop sometimes. And then we've yep. got Lee from Ecots. I did a video call for, um, from my garden with family. It was fine, but the light kept changing due to the clouds and stuff. Absolutely. And that's the challenge. It's actually the same challenge indoors as well. If you've got windows, the lighting changes. Um, where I am here, I've got the light to my left there. My window, my garden is there. I sometimes go in the dining room, the lounge, and I was toying about today where I've got a window each side of both because it's a lounge diner. But on my right, I've got a, a, a big light and I've also got another small ring light here to try to help compensate. Lighting is a challenge. Absolutely. Uh, Amy, that's interesting. Too many birds. <laughs> yep. And it could be nice if, it's a, if you're giving that. Relax. It also depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're in a business and your business is about outdoor activities and uh, it could be the right congruent message to do that. But you have to balance it with the weather, with how many animals are out there. Um, you have to balance it with the fact that clouds can drastically change the lighting. But this is looking down. And this is what we do a lot of the time. We're looking at the screen. Does that feel like you're being looked at as much? Um, and I won't necessarily ask you to write that. You can put in the, co in the comments or not. But you notice the difference. And that's how we are a lot of the time. And by the way, I still fall into that trap a lot. I had to force myself to look up. And I found the trick personally is sometimes to look just about an inch below the lens. And it's, it feels a little bit more natural. But for, I'm being told by others, when I look an inch or so below, not four or five inches below the lens, but just that little bit below the lens. In fact, what I've got right now, I've got a separate webcam on and I'm not looking directly into the webcam lens, but into the camera, the onboard camera lens, which is about an inch below it. I was just going to say, what about if you've got a webcam as opposed to, you know, the little camera on the laptop? Um, so how do you know you've positioned it correctly? Well, you see on your own image when you, when you set it up, you, for instance, you go on, I'm looking, I can see on the image on the side, I could see before when we had our test, I set it up on the test. And what I personally do anyway is I, I go onto Zoom normally, open up my own Zoom, set it up there, then I can close and join the meeting separately. But right. I do that's a test, that's pre-test. Test the equipment beforehand. And it's no big deal if it goes, to, if the webcam doesn't work because you've got the internal webcam. But I'll, I'll, I was going to talk about that on equipment. Um, now, I'm trying to find the little button to click okay. here. Um, so, yep, we've just got somebody joining us now, Gurpreet Singh. So welcome um, from Varis Coaching Centre. So... Uh, Hi there. Okay, can I just remind everybody this webinar is being recorded. Um, I did have somebody ask the question and um, it's available probably from tomorrow morning um, on the Chamber website um, under webinar library. So you can access that and you can share the link amongst your network and uh, we'll get it up on our um, on our social media channels as well. So probably LinkedIn and uh, Steve will be tagged in or Steve, if you could share the link yep. um, on LinkedIn, and then that will also allow you to connect with the delegates that have joined us today. Um, so can I also remind everybody, um, if they've got any questions, then please feel free to post them in the chat box. We've got another poll coming up later. Um, so yeah, all good. It's very interactive. Um, uh, Steve and, and engaging so That's great it's thank good you to, uh, questions is great because uh, it's much more about interaction um, no one wants to be just talked to it's more about being you know, talk, speaking with so great. this is just showing a, a demonstration and this one isn't so good I look when you have the camera so low down and it's looking up at your face up at the ceiling um, <laughs> I was on um, a call recently and some people have it on a coffee table and it's looking and all you see is a top half of their chin upwards uh, and sometimes not even a lower not even that and you're looking up there and it looks awful but if you were to when you see people like that on a call and, and that's not as bad as I, I couldn't make it as i wanted to doing it on my own but you can notice the difference people want to feel they're engaged and they're engaged when you're looking at them or at least appear to be looking at them so let's have a look at what, um, what I'll call the image, address and backgrounds. And it's three years, it's address sense. 
And the reason I put this up, this is not about do you have to wear a suit, a tie, a, a dress or whatever, because um, whatever is consistent with your organization, the way you are is fine. But I put this down because things that we forget about well, when we're face to face have a, a negative impact on camera. By that, it's what are the colors in so much as do you have checks or stripes? Now, I found this out. I've got uh, some, a couple of check shirts and on camera, they, if you, uh, when the sun moves about a little bit, you get a shimmering effect on the shirt. And so you have to be aware of these things. Plain colors is better. I've got a dark background and I've got a lightish shirt. I normally wear the purple shirt, but because I've got the purple background, because purple is my color, I put on a lighter shirt. If I had the white background, I'd probably put the purple shirt on. So think about the dress sense. Also, clearly, you have to consider what is expected of you. Um, do, are you I know someone who's dre who always dresses in what look like sort of check shirts, lumberjack type shirts, jeans. That's his brand. That's his way. That's fine. He doesn't change. He's consistent. So what is it for you? Um, just be aware of that. So then let's also look at being consistent with your brand. Because even as an employee, and we have some employees on this course, you still have a personal brand. And a brand is not what you want it to be necessarily. It's the perception other people have of you, which is why I think the whole thing about online impact and looking professional, that is what will come across to your customers, your peers, your managers, your organization as you and your brand. So the final thing is backgrounds. Now, as I say, I've got a clear background. You saw what my background was before, it's just for shelves, the white wall of the brackets, shelves holding books and um, DVDs. Any, any background that's uncluttered is fine. I was toying with holding this webinar today in my dining room and I could have put up the background, but behind me I had simply a cabinet and it was an, a neat looking cabinet. It's your home. This is, you're inviting people into your home. If it looks tidy and respectful and the lighting is good, that is perfect. So you don't need to have the virtual backgrounds. I'm not crazy on the virtual backgrounds for two reasons. The first one is that people tend to choose backgrounds that are clearly, well, you're not there. Seeing someone, you know, it's, it's, it's the ideal beach, it's beach heaven, and you're sitting and you know that the weather in the country is horrible, it's bleak, it's thundery. We know it's inauthentic. And I've met someone who did a talk on leadership and he had a virtual background. Um, the other, his background was he was in space. Well, where's the relevance of that? Now, if it's relevant to your talk, it's different. And there are ways of using virtual backgrounds within your slides, uh, but that's another, another that's for another time. But the thing, the other thing is, um, you need to, if you're using virtual backgrounds, you should have a green screen, a physical green screen. Just because your machine on Zoom allows you to put virtual background, is not good enough. Because what will happen is, um, and when it comes up, uh, next slide being slow and coming up again. So just bear with me. Oh, uh, gone too far. I think you clicked on the the wrong icon, Steve. I have. Now I've gone out of them. Um, I need to go into slide share again, don't I? Do you want me to do that? I'll quickly yes, do please. that. Okay. okay, just need remote control access. Just bear with us, everybody. Um, we do have somebody that's mentioned, do we get a participation certificate? Um, no, there isn't. You should have received a, a registration link and that's um, uh, or a confirmation to your registration link. So... Uh, sorry, just um, going yeah. back to Steve's slide. I'm going to the one. Oh, well, let's keep going. That, that one? one? That one, that one. Next one. There we go. I'm just going to give you yeah. remote control access. And we've got a question, a couple of questions on the green screen. That um, Teresa says she's bought the green screen to project, but it still shimmers. And I'm, that's exactly why I'm going to cover it. Um, and uh, Corinne says it doesn't, doesn't work with a virtual background. Um, yeah, and I'll come, come to that. One of the things that happens with green screens or rather with virtual backgrounds without green screens often is this. Have you noticed I've lost half a shoulder, I've lost bits of an arm, 
Um, and if you move your head, you'll find this, your ears or your hair has funny sort of rings all around it. It's, I call it the hologram effect. The only way green screens work reliably is if you've got absolutely perfect lighting and an absolutely perfect green screen with no wrinkles, taut, stripe. And that's why I'm personally not in favor of green screens unless it's essential because it's very hard to get that perfect, and, and you can get the perfect lighting, but it's hard to do that. I have a green screen that fits on the back of my chair. Um, silly idea, because every if I move a little bit, the green screen moves and the thing shivers. But the lighting is critical. Um, now, Corinne says your green screen doesn't work with virtual backgrounds. I'm not sure, if, Corinne, if, you if you've got a physical green screen, or if you're using just virtual backgrounds on your, um, so you have a physical but a color green screen. Yeah, the aim is to have a physical green screen if you want to do it properly and do it better and perfect lighting. And I'll talk about lighting in a moment. Um, in fact, I think that might be coming up. But other, there's other equipment that might help you when you're speaking. And then let me just come on to that now. As I say, I'm trying to... Oh. That's it. Got it again. So these are just... Here's the examples of green screens. The blue one, green is used because it tends to be the better one for the backgrounds, um, but it can be any color. And you don't need to have a, a, a superimpose a background on it. But here, I'm showing you a laptop stand because typically laptops are on the table or your desk. You're sitting higher than the desk. Now we talked about looking at the camera lens and not looking, not having the camera looking up at you. One way of doing this is to put books underneath it. I, I, I could use a couple of box files, but box files are a bit fiddly, especially if you want to type on it. You've got to raise your hands up with fingers and type above there. This type of laptop stand, and there are many. I've actually got one like this. And the, the keyboard is sloping. I can type on this keyboard. And actually, after a while, I find it harder to type on the flat surface. But um, the keyboard works. Yeah, it works on there. But this is just optional equipment. So, I mean, it helps you. But what so, I want to look at... Steve, yep. um, so Corey also says, um, how, should, how big should the green screen be and where do you recommend buying from? Right, how big depends on whether you're sitting down speaking or standing up. Um, if you're standing up to do a talk, for instance, and you like to stand up and you're setting back a bit further, you might need a green screen that's quite wide, you know, but two to three metres wide. Generally, though, um, I think, I'm trying to think what my one is. It's, I've got a circular one. I think those square ones are better. About two meters by, or circular ones, about two meter circle or maybe a little bit less, one and a half meter, will cover um, what the camera shows. But bear in mind, the further back you sit, the wider the camera is picking up. Or the further back you have the camera from where you sit, the wider it goes. I would estimate typically, uh, you look on Amazon and put in green screen and you'll find a wide selection. And the ones I showed on the previous page, I think are on Amazon. Let me just go back there. This style, this is a quite a popular style. I've got one that's like that, but circular. But the advantage of this is if you've got a shelf behind, you can always just hook it on the shelf. Um, you can put it on a stand. There's no set, I mean, it's, it swings and roundabouts what you want to invest in. What I am wary of, though, personally, are the green screens that are a fabric that um, come with the poles and the fabrics are cheap fabrics and you've got to, you can't iron out the creases. These are sprung loaded. They're photochromic and they're spring loaded. I mean, it takes me, it usually takes me 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes to work out how to pack it away again. It's supposed to be dead simple, but I always get confused. But they're very, they just spring open and they're taut and they're perfect. Okay, great. Um, Tessa says the aim to have webcam level with your eyes, and I believe that she's yep. referring to the stand. Right. So yeah, yep. the stand helps with that. Absolutely, the stand helps with putting it. I put this on the stand, and the, and the webcam is more or less at my eye level. And if I used my MacBook Air machine, I've got just down here. That's a smaller machine. It's a little bit lower, but it's still not too. It's still not too bad. It's it's almost at eye level. So I aim for the eye level every time. So I'm going to look at lighting and I've double clicked again. Just bear with me. 
because we talked about lighting and I've just shown some thing. Anything can work, by the way. I've seen people when there's so much in the dark, you can't see them. You cannot see them at all. And it, it's really off-putting if you cannot see the person at all. If you've got take standard lamps like these, I'm moving my mouse about, I hope you can see the mouse moving. You know, that'll do. Table lamps might help. Ring lights are very popular and there's an assortment of different styles. Um, some are very cheap, some go up very expensive. And then I've actually got these, these are newer, there's different styles of newers. I just paid a hundred pounds nearly for these, but you don't have to spend on this. You can be, the whole point is invest just a small amount, a simple little light, just like you have a light each side. I've got a small ring light there. If that was about 15 pounds, I could have two of them in front, but bear in mind when the lighting is directly in front, um, that ring light is good, but because I wear glasses, I get a ring on the glasses. So you've got to experiment to see what it's like. And even if you don't get perfect lighting, um, aim to at least make sure that it's reasonable lighting and people can see you. It's, it really is that simple. And again, I found most of myself just looking around Amazon and, and what have you got in the house, but look around Amazon for different types. I know one person who's just bought some ring lighting, a very expensive one at around 200 pounds. Um, that's fine. He's, he's in business and his business is around speaking and, and training. And that's what he does. You know, I'm in business. So I use these, the newer ones, but I've also got a small ring light. I also have two LED desk lights. Uh, the only, they, they're good, but they're so bright. They dazzle me. So I have to turn them away from me. I find that more and more people are using the ring lights now and I'm seeing yep. them, um, you know, when people are showcasing their office or just generally in the house for, for all purposes. Um, people, you know, doing these live beauty yeah. uh, videos ring and they've got them perfect. there for their lighting. So, yeah. Perfectly when they're straight in front and you can put them behind the camera. But if you wear glasses, you will get um, a halo effect on your glasses. So bear in mind that. And so you may want to do two ring lights and have them not facing you in directly in front of you, but slightly to your sides and just point you from the sides. I've only got one here because I've got the window to that side. So I'm compensating on this side. But um, that's the thing about um, the lighting. Let's take a look at webcams and cameras. Ah. Okay, and you have a selection of choices. Uh, you've got the internal webcams and most machines that the internal um, camera is adequate, it's more than adequate. But I've got a high density and there is a difference. You notice when I, uh, if I switch between the two, there'll be quite a difference. Um, it's good enough, the, the ordinary camera is good enough. You do not have to spend on webcams. But the Logitech 920 is, is a very popular camera. But Logitech's are very popular all around. Um, I've forgotten which one this is now, but um, any type of external webcam, if it's HD, will make a difference. But you notice I've also put my smartphone there, my iPhone. You can download software. Um, one of them is called Epoch Cam, E-P-O-C-C-A-M. -E and that will help turn your iPhone or your smartphone into a webcam. And you can mount it just above the laptop and you can use that you can select that to be a webcam and they are good cameras your your smartphones are good cameras so you don't need to buy another camera if you don't want to if you want to increase that just use your smartphone it's something you have to it can be fiddly getting the holder because you ideally want to have the smartphone in landscape mode so you've got to make sure you can hold it have a holder that will put it in landscape mode just above and behind the laptop the advantage of that also is you can adjust the height and the laptop can be on the desk, but you could be looking at the camera six inches above it. So you have choices around that. But being seen is important. Um, let me just move on and I'm going to fire the next poll here, please. So yeah. Marita, can you fire the next poll? Yeah, I'm just going to bring that up. And what have I got the questions? Yep. Okay, there's the poll. So what do you, what 
do you do to ensure best quality sound and no distractions? Because we had the various things of what's the most important, sound, lighting, um, charting and planning and things like that. Uh, and there's a mixture of things, but online, surprisingly, it's not the visual, but the sound that's the most critical. Just think if you go to YouTube, uh, do you tend, if there's a video on that's very clear, but you can't hear it, do you give up? Most of us do. Sound is far more critical than visual when we're online. Obviously, all of them are, are critical, but sound tends to be, we tend to place more important. So making sure we're heard clearly is, is important. And sometimes that's because bandwidth on the line is bad and you hear people dropping in and out, just like on a mobile call, if signals dropping in and out, and we sound distorted. Um, we're less tolerant of poor sound than we are of poor uh, visual. So can we look at the results now, please, Narinda? Yeah, there we go. It's sharing the results. Microphone. Yeah. That's, um, and, head, and that's actually, I think, again, it depends on how you're using them. Headsets and microphones work very well when you're facilitating calls, um, perhaps if you're training uh, for various meetings. If you're, if you're speaking to an audience, they perhaps may be less so, although there are so many people who like the different ones. Some people like the uh, microphones that um, come around the, in front, some like it taped to their face, and some like lapel microphones, um, wireless-like microphones, if they are speaking, etc. Okay, let's close the poll, please. And I shall move on to talk about sound. And here I'm just going to, it's just going to be one slide showing a mixture of things. So yeah, the headphones and microphone, very clear, very, you know, perfect. And Narinda's is absolutely perfect coming across. No Great, problem. thanks. Yeah, I'm, this is, I think I find these really useful um, really are. And, and very clear. And so. they can be expensive to get good ones, but you don't have to. You can get basic ones as well. Everything is... You know, you don't, you can spend as little or as much as you want. Um, from the point of view of listening, you can use your earbuds if you want to get rid of other external distractions around the house. But the cheap option is simply a lapel mic or lavalier mic, wired. You can get a wired microphone. So it's just tapped to your shirt, your blouse, whichever you have. And it's maybe, and I would suggest you need at least a three meter cable because you will move a bit. And that allows you if you do need to stand up. But just having a wired microphone, and these can be around the eight pound mark, 10 pound mark. They're very simple, cheap and cheerful. Down below that is what's called a blue snowball. Uh, that's what I'm using actually. But other popular microphones are the Blue Yeti, the Rode, and they can be quite expensive. They can go from 50 to 150 pounds. Um, but Again, you don't need to have those. The, e the cheapest is the lapel mic. If you're doing a lot of meeting type calls, then the headphone sets are perfect. Absolutely are. Down on the bottom left, there's something called Hey Mic, and uh, there are other versions now. That is a Bluetooth microphone. So that way it's particularly useful if you're walking about speaking. Um, personally, I don't want to use it online unless, unless I'm walking about speaking. I don't want to use it because it's introducing another element of technology that can be a problem when you're already using technology. For instance, um, on polls, I like using the internal polls if I'm on Zoom. Some people like using something called Mentimeter, which actually uses through mobiles and you text on the mobile the um, responses. I love using that if I'm talking live face to face. But when you're online, it's a second level of a technology above the technology we're using. And I just think, keep it simple. Oh, finally, on the lapel mics, you can plug them into the microphone jack, but then you might lose sound. So these are adapters, so you can plug it into the, the jack, the 3.5 millimeter jack into the USB adapter here, and then plug that into a USB port. So you still got live sound and microphone. So simply a selection of um, a selection of different type of microphones, whatever works for you. 
with communication, I've actually, I think, what's my question? I, had, I was going to ask a question on communication. Um, communication, what do you consider is more important? The nonverbal communication, the verbal communication, and I'm reading what I've got here, um, having what I call a, um, a back channel, which is a means of contacting the organiser whilst we're live. And I've got a back channel right now. Um, as much as I've said to Narinda, she could WhatsApp me on my mobile if there's a problem that she doesn't want to sort of come out here, as well as, of course, use the private chat. But I'm not always looking at the private chat when I'm speaking. So it's an option to have there. But is there, are visuals and props more important um, to communicate? Or is it the ability to handle questions? What do you think is most important? Or what would you, and it can be more than one, what would you consider is an important part of communication online. So any ideas in the chat, please? And like I say, I mean, the, the um, back channel is a useful, a useful thing I caught on through from my own speech mentor who says he always has a link to the organiser. Um, so if there's any problems, he knows about it. Now, I'm not seeing any responses at the moment, so um, let's just perhaps move on. Oh, we've got, um, no, we don't have a response yet. No, that's fine. It's just to consider what you consider most important. And let's just take a look at communication. Communication, we, we communicate through our five senses. Having said that, when we're online, clearly our sense of taste our sense of smell and also our sense of touch is less relevant. It's not relevant at all, really. But we do have both the visual and the vocal, the auditory and the visual. So I'm going to put it into it. We have what we're saying, the physical words, the, the, our language or linguistics and how we say it, what, what we say. We have our visual um, communication. And we have the vocal, the tonality, the sounds. So again, from those, which do you consider most important right now or when you're online? Is it what we're saying? Is it what we're seeing? Or is it the tone, the way we're putting it? When you're face to face, you your visual is really you have a lot more scope of looking at the visual you can take in um, all body language you can take in move subtle movements you can take in the shift of weight a lot easier but when we're online we're looking primarily at facial expressions and also anything above the arm it looks silly if you're doing mood gestures down there where people can't see it so if you're doing physical gestures, you have to look at me on the screen, you actually have to show the physical gestures and be aware that as you take your hands forward, suddenly the proportion of your hand to your face is way out of proportion. So we have to consider how we're using visual. Um, so absolutely visuals are there and people are looking and that's where the eye contact comes in. Um, and the smile, the expressions, simple little gestures like that, making little points. So Corey, uh, sorry Steve, so Corey says tone yeah. um, and then we've got Heidi Pocock, she says I would uh, think that we are saying, saying visual. visual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's and a mixture of each and the, um, there's no set ratio which it is but we look at all three. We clearly can't be looking at the physiology, uh, touch, we can't be thinking about touch so hence we're only looking at these, the three V's as opposed to the five senses. Visual is critical, but I think um, I'm going to call it vocal. It's sound is, is really critical in communication online. As I already said, excuse me, I'll have a sip of water. Okay, we've also got a question, another question from Corey. So, um, so for a talking heads video, is it best to show arms and hands for body language and make um, it more engaging? It can vary. I'd say the answer to that is it depends. Um, talking heads, I'm not sure quite what she means by that. If it's just the heads, 
right now I'm showing effectively from mid chest upwards. I can angle it to show a little bit more lower down, but not much because ideally your face wants to be, the top of your head wants to be close to the top of the screen. And I've been looking at the screen to see where I am on it um, because I've only got the small image on the screen. But I normally try to set my, my um, camera so that my face is from about um, the one, about a third to two thirds or maybe a bit more than a third to two thirds upwards. So it's close to the top, from the middle to, towards close to the top and it can see some of me. If I'm stand, sitting down, I can use certain gestures. If I was standing up though, that'd be different and I, then you could stand back and show more of the screen uh, and more of your body. It all depends on your style. I still like speaking standing up, but it's a way of a way of working now. So we need to project the same energy when we're sitting down. And that's one, one of the things that comes across now on, when it comes to sound. We have to put a little bit more energy than if we were face to face, because that comes if we just speak a little bit. If I were to talk rather like I was in a meeting one to one, it might not sound as um, poomph as it does if I raise it a little bit. So I think that we need to raise the energy a little bit more when we're um, online. And we need to position a camera depending on what we want to see. Like I say, if I sit back, and I'll demonstrate that now, I can get back, you've got more of me. I would bring my microphone closer to be heard. And I've been asked what's the optimum distance. Um, again, it depends. Right now, I've got the laptop back on the desk about tw 12 inches and I'm sat back about another four, four to six inches. That way I can put a writing pad in front of the laptop if I'm in a meeting. But I could bring it right forward. Okay. So Sorry, as here yeah. we've got another question from Lee as well. Um, he's saying, um, I found that natural pauses in conversation seem to have disappeared and now people feel they have to fill all the gaps almo almost to fill the silence. Um, and that is perhaps down to the individual feeling self-conscious. We don't see the audience in the same way. Or we are, and I say audience, we're talking about whether we're speaking or in meetings. It's a big difference, really. Or training you should be able to be comfortable with silence. If I could give a, an analogy, um, if I've been coaching people and I, a while ago I was coaching someone and he was very considered in his responses. I left him up to a minute of absolute silence without saying a word to allow him to come to his own conclusion on the question because he was answering a question. I asked a question, if I interrupted, the question is invalid. So you can use silence, but, and you can use pauses, especially if you're giving a speech. If you're in a meeting, <laughs> one of the challenges is if you have long pauses, someone else might break in and interrupt. So everything, it depends on where you are and what it is. Um, I don't know if that helps you, Lee, because there's no set right or wrong. Thank you, Steve. So, communication also has, I'll tell you, I mentioned the back channel and it is um, really, really important uh, to know that you've got a means of communicating if there's a problem with the organiser. Communicating yeah. will also, it's a very much, it's looking at the non-verbals and we have to pick our words a little bit more carefully. So absolutely what we say is critical. There's no, uh, there's no ratio. And I don't ever quote the Moravian myth about percentages because that's not what he said. I even got an interview to prove he didn't say that. But it, we use all levels of communication. Everything is important. It all depends on the context. So online, our communication, we have to focus on all of those and how we make the biggest impact. Um, and by the way, the faceless friend, the simplest thing, you know, the smile, the lightness of tone. That makes a huge difference. That's okay, honestly. we've got a, another question um, here and it's from Janelle. He's saying sometimes it's down to the individual audience member, for example, visual learners versus auditory learners. Yep. Do you tailor your presentations accordingly, if possible? 
that's not always possible because you just don't know who, what type of members are in the audience. I don't mean you don't know the type of organisation or what the problems are. I mean, you don't know the individuals, how they're going to, are they going to interrupt? Are they not? Do they have that need to speak in between? We don't know. In a meeting, it's a lot different to when it's a speech. If you're speaking, you have control. Now, even if it's a, on a, I mean, this is on a webinar where uh, members don't have the access to button and speak, but even on a meeting, on, a, on say Zoom meetings, you can, or go to meetings, you can control that. So the speaker only unmutes when they need, when they unmute others when they need to. So I think you have to know your audience and what you're doing and whether you have the option to mute people without them unmuting themselves until you allow them to unmute. But that's the setting, that's going into the technicalities, which this talk isn't about really. Um, does that so, answer the question for Lee? I hope it does. Uh, for Janelle, I believe, yeah, that question. Um, moving on, Tessa, um, she's asking for any tips for standing up presenting. Um, and it has also said, great webinar, thanks by the way. Thanks, Tessa. Yeah, standing up. I mean, this is where I, I, I used to do a, pro, a program or a workshop I called, or even a talk. I used to call it first, second and last impressions. And that was about developing executive presence, a powerful executive presence. Because the, your presence, your charisma and gravitas is what people, hooks people into you even before you open your mouth. And I'm simply trying to adapt this to the online world. What's, what will actually attract people and make them think, yeah, this might be worth listening to. And that's about the online presence, which is why I've done this, got this workshop or this webinar. So if you're standing up, for instance, I would always say you stand symmetrical, not asymmetrical. That is, your weight should be evenly spread on both feet. You should feel really grounded, such as if someone came up behind you and and I used to do this with the, um, the little finger of my left hand, just pull back against their shoulder. If they were well grounded, they would hardly, it wouldn't budge. If they weren't, their feet, their legs would move and they'd, they'd move backwards. Ground yourself, um, be symmetrical, sort of stand firm, stand strong, but don't be rigid. Just be relaxed yet symmetrical and grounded and look and engage with the camera. That's well, I would say on how you do it when you're standing up and you're doing very similar sitting down. You just, you're not rigid. I'm just sitting here. This is, this is my home. I'm inviting you into my home. Uh, as someone I know puts it, you're, you just think TV presenter. It's a chat show. It's a chat show. Do you look engaging? Do you look professional? It's the setup professional. You don't have to be that perfect presenter sitting down. If you're standing up, you're doing a talk and you might now be putting more effort into how you look on a talk. Okay, this is great. We've got lots of questions coming in. Okay. Um, so Lee once again said, yes, I think that nailed it. So that was your response, Steve. Yep. Uh, you leave a pause and others feel like they need to speak, almost yep. like interrupting. Yeah, that happens on meetings, definitely. And there's very little you can do about that. Um, unless you you have control over who is muted and who is not okay. so that's the only way i can see that okay alistair binks um any thoughts on how to get through the times when you lose your your thread in the presentation yes i i, I like to keep the now i don't know it's alistair is that as a speech type of presentation or as a um training or or as a, in a meeting because it's a vast difference I, i'll answer it as though it's a speech um, I find I never learn a speech. I say never. Depends. If it's a short sort of five minute thing at Toastmasters, I might learn it mostly. But generally, the only thing I want to learn is my open and my close. Yes, Alistair says yes in a speech. Yeah. OK, so absolutely nail your open and your close. Have them ingrained in your mind. Totally. No, you can go there and also be ready to go for an emergency close if you're running over time. Um, by the way, that reminds me, how much time do we have, Narinda? Um, we have gone over, but that's fine. Um, your webinar is just very engaging and interactive. Yeah. So we've got lots of questions coming in. Over to the next one, Prem Kumar. Okay. For online classes, which mode of communication will be recommended in order to, um, to make a class more interesting? 
online classes is different to speaking it's now training now you'll use all, all aspects you will use things like whiteboards you will use breakout rooms um, you'll make it very clear the instructions what you're doing um, you'll use visuals far more than you might do in the classroom in so much as i would not use as many powerpoint slides i would hardly ever use them if i was doing training i prefer not to unless it's repetitive stuff i'd rather use a flip chart whiteboards on things like zoom uh, are more not as easy unless you've got things like external tablets um, that do pen tablets uh, that you can write things on there but you do have breakout rooms you do have the whiteboards you want interactive exercises uh, and that's using all all styles and you might have something like okay the first person who can go and um, um, leave a leave a desk and come back with a hat anything just break the ice get people moving you will you need to be engaging you need to do something different every few minutes to get interaction and does teams have a whiteboard i don't know i've i have downloaded teams i haven't used it yet but the reason um, and i don't think teams have breakout rooms at the moment i'm told they might have so um oh did i cover i'm not sure if i fully covered alice's thing his question um yes you did lose, yeah losing the other thing alice said for that i have an outline um in so much as i use stories in speeches and as, each, as the stories are all personal all i have to have written down is what you know re, um ibm story um john lewis story um sort of military story whatever and i know what i mean but you could otherwise just have a, a bullet points or even the mind map with just the bullets on where to just to prompt you on what that topic is because you should be able to talk on a a bullet or a set or a, a bullet point for two or three minutes at least if not five or ten minutes if it's your topic fantastic okay. steve I have one other thing to show, which is moving away slightly. I've got one technical tip, which is not so much just online. It's actually relevant for both online and offline. And I'm just going to bring that up. And that's talking about using PowerPoints. Um, and I'll come to Keynote in a minute. PowerPoint. When you put PowerPoint in slideshow mode, it goes full screen. So you can't see anything else on your screen. Does everybody relate with that? Yes. You, you can get round that very simply. And you can leave your PowerPoint in slideshow mode, but it is not in full screen. It will take up the, the whole screen of a desktop, but you'll see, still see all your programs on your docking station at the bottom or the top, wherever you have them. You'll still have all of that. And it's called um, putting it browse by an individual window. So I put it up here. The first thing is to click on slideshow. When that opens up the window, you'll go to set up show. And that opens the, the next window, which is down here, show types. And if normally it's in browse, it's presented by a speaker full screen. If you click browse by an individual window, you can now save that and you can leave it that way all the time. And even if you're presenting live on stage, you can be showing, in a, you can be in a pre, in slideshow. You might be on slide 12, and some, some, a question comes up and someone asks you to check something. You think, well, I've got that on my laptop or I can go online and get that. You can click on whatever bit it is on your laptop or online. And then when you go back to PowerPoint, you're still there on slide 12 on slideshow. It is the same on Zoom or anything else. It means that when I go to share screen, I don't have to then click on, oh, where's slideshow? Click on that, open slideshow. It goes straight in if I've just clicked on it. I just click on it. And it opens up immediately in slideshow mode but i've still got access to all my desktop okay i'm just going to summarize now let's cover what we've covered um, that we do want to think about preparing chart i call it chart and plan um, i have a book i'm going to be launching very shortly and i use the, i use a 7c structure and speaking public speaking uh, because um, and I believe a chart and plan is the first thing we'll think consider what you want but online we, it's about being seen being seen clearly so where's the camera are we looking at the camera what's the lighting like etc 
being heard and that's absolutely critical and i i hope that this has been clear for you the whole time i just noticed my snowballs moved a bit and finally it's being relevant or being how we communicate that's the message and we communicate through all our you know the, the three v's and of course having a backup plan i'm glad i didn't need to use the backup plan yes. so, <laughs> In essence, I really believe that um, we have an opportunity now. This is not going to go away. You know, we are going to be working online for several years. Companies are realizing it is not practical to go back to the way it was. And it'll be a long time before they'll be able to have offices as packed out as they were um, without having social distancing in place. But even when and if that ever gets sorted and may and if and when there's a, there's a um, something to clear the virus. Companies are learning that online communication is efficient. And when you speak online, you make an impact. Every time you are seen or heard online, you have an interaction. And every interaction is a moment of truth. And that moment of truth could be your personal brand. And it could be the difference between winning or losing business. It could be the difference between being passed over or being or winning the opportunity. And it could be the difference between staying in the job or being made redundant. So I really do hope that you take on board in whatever way you can, whatever tips you can that can help you to be more professional and make an impact online. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Steve, um, for educating us today on how to look professional. So how to look and sound professional online. So you've given us some great tips and touched on some key areas. Um, it's been very educating. Um, also, thank you for sharing um, the images of um, equipment and gadgets that can be used when equipping ourselves for an online presentation. So I found these quite useful. Um, and yes, the headset I wear is, it's great. And, and you know, it's very clear when not, when I speak to the others. Um, so, yep. Did you want to reflect on something else? Steve? Yeah, I wanted to ask, what are any final questions? Oh, I went too far again. That's okay. No problem. Yep. Any okay. questions, please um, post them in the, the chat box. Um, we've got some really good responses here. Um, so Dr. Rachna Singh says very informative and um, enriching webinar. Thank you from Curry. Peter Smith. Thanks, Steve. Very useful. See you later. Lee, thank you and well yep. done. Lots to think about there, not just in uh, work as I feel video uh, communications is going to be a thing for work, friends, family um, going is. forward. Um, Corey, just missed a bit on the slideshow for PowerPoint. If I press yeah. escape and then want to... It's all right. So I'll... Okay. Yeah. Can I just add that? Oops, I just want to... I'll, I'll go forward one again. Um, just want to put my if um, I'd be happy to connect with people on LinkedIn. Um, obviously, you know it's, it's a platform we use. If people found it useful, I'd certainly appreciate a LinkedIn recommendation. And if you want to find out more, please do contact me. I'm, the, I'm very easy to find. It's an unusual name. Um, you can get me very easily, and I do look forward to connecting with people a little bit. I do look forward to connecting. So um, do please do, get in contact. I run. I do run workshops on this. I do also talk on what I call the secret sales force, which is a same sort of thing. This is all about the secret sales force. Oops, gone, for, gone forward again. Don't know what's happening. It's lost my details again now. Here we go. So you can contact me at um, stevecatchett.com, steve at stevecatchett.com or LinkedIn. Um, like I say, I do, I do workshops. I, I do training, I speak on the topic, I do workshops on the topic of making an impact, and I do workshops on the topic of the customer experience. Every interaction is a moment of truth. So if you know people who want that, I'd certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Steve. Okay, so just going to move over to the next slide. Um, this is the chamber slide. I'm going to bring myself back on video now. Okay, excellent. So um, this is the chamber membership model. Um, if I'm looking on towards my left, it's because I'm looking at my, um, my left screen or my second screen. Um, so this is our membership model. It shows um, how there's different membership tiers and you can join um, 
a tier of your choice which is designed to attract a business depending on the level of exposure that they require um, as well as savings that can be made so um, have a, a look on the chamber website um, to get an overview of the different benefits and services available um, under each tier so uh, yep that's the, the membership model over to the next slide okay I'm just gonna Okay, so the Chamber has launched a business continuity toolkit, which is aimed at ensuring, ensuring you've got access to a single portal. So this is a information um, and guidance hub, which you can access through the Chamber website. And it's full of information. It's got lots of interesting links in there, all the relevant links that you may need um, to access uh, information around um, support or advice you need um, around COVID-19. So lots of useful government links in there as well. Well, um, so yep. Okay, Steve, thank you once again for delivering um, such an interactive and engaging webinar. Um, taking okay. away some really interesting tips from yourself. Um, and it's an interesting topic that you've touched on and tied it around the current situation because I think we've all gone virtual now um, in terms of meetings, delivering webinars and just our general events. So um, it's a really key area you've touched on. Um, and uh, yeah, online communication is now um, a way of life um, as you put up in, on your post on LinkedIn and, and, and the Chamber website. So yeah, um, I've added Steve's contact details on this slide as well. So that's Steve's email address, his website address, and uh, previous slides showed uh, Steve's LinkedIn address as well. So please do link um, with Steve. I can see lots of questions um, that have come through today and I can still see, you know, there's lots um, just going back on the chat box and I can see, yeah, uh, people said big thank you um, to Steve for today's webinar. Um, so I can see you've got more and uh, more questions to ask. So connect with Steve um, or send him an email and uh, he'll be able to answer your questions accordingly. And uh, if you need just generally any further information, then, you know, Steve's there. Fantastic. I would like to thank all of you for listening in today. Just to remind you, uh, as I did before, um, the webinar has been recorded and is available through the Chamber webinar library. So you can use that link, share it amongst your network. Um, and yeah, Steve, put it up on LinkedIn so people can then listen again. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.